Approximately 7,500 people suffer from end-stage renal disease in Switzerland. End-stage is the final phase of chronic kidney disease, when the kidneys function at only 10% capacity. The causes of this condition are many, and there are several methods of treatment known as renal substitution treatment. Hemodialysis, peritoneal dialysis, and kidney transplant. We will present each treatment, including their advantages and disadvantages, in this film to help you choose, insofar as possible, the treatment which seems best adapted to your state of health and way of life. Group consultation offers the opportunity to learn and discuss each treatment's advantages and disadvantages. The types of illnesses which provoke chronic kidney disease are often diabetes, high blood pressure, genetic illnesses and vascular problems. Kidneys have several functions. They produce urine and eliminate toxic substances. Kidneys also play a role in developing red blood cells, regulating blood pressure and maintaining bone structure. It's been a month since your last visit. How have you been? Uh, very tired. It's been really hard getting upstairs lately. I'm easily out of breath and when I walk in town, I just don't seem to have the energy to do any of the things I used to do. Chronic kidney disease produces a certain number of problems as it progresses. Tiredness, even exhaustion, difficulties concentrating and insomnia, edemas in the legs or around the eyes, higher blood pressure, itching, lack of appetite and dislike of meat, nausea and vomiting. Your kidney isn't doing as well as it was, but things are stable. It's at more or less 15%. Your creatinine level has increased a little, but your kidney function hasn't changed. A suitable medical treatment, along with a well-adapted diet, may slow development of the terminal phase, known as the end stage. That is to say, the point where some form of substitution becomes absolutely necessary. At that time, you will have to choose between one of the three following renal substitutions. Always remember, this is an incurable disease. Mrs. Serioli recently retired. She suffers from chronic kidney disease and has been on hemodialysis since 2003. She grew depressed at the idea that she was obliged to have a renal substitution treatment, refused hemodialysis and ended up in hospital. The use of a dialyser is necessary for hemodialysis. The blood flows towards the dialyser and passes through a filter which is in fact an artificial kidney that eliminates toxins. Generally speaking, three four-hour dialyses are required per week. You have to come to the hospital each time. To make the process easier, an arteriovenous fistula is performed on the patient's arm before the first dialysis. It is a simple operation that links an artery to a vein. This widens the vein to enhance blood flow. Hemodialysis entails pumping large quantities of blood. Shall I begin, Mrs. Serioli? Yes. There. Are you okay? Yes. Does it hurt? No. My family insisted that I get out of the house. They told me I couldn't continue like that, that I had to change my attitude. I finally agreed and we went for a drive in the country. The trees were in bloom and I suddenly realized that spring had come. I understood that I had closed my heart to all the joys of nature because I was convinced that I could never be happy on dialysis. It was time to act. I started cooking again and began enjoying myself. I loved knitting and listening to music and going for walks. Hello, Mrs. Serioli. How are you? Hello. Fine, thank you. Not too tired? No, not very. 
Are you going on holiday soon? Yes, in April. Good. Where to? I'm going to Italy, but my dialysis will be done in Lugano. Lugano, okay. We'll prepare the paperwork like we did the last time. We'll Good. arrange everything. Dialysis takes four hours. We watch television, we read, and sometimes we sleep. We can also chat with other dialysis patients. There is a lot of friendliness here. Even among the patients I dialyze with. In peritoneal dialysis, a liquid solution called dialysate passes through a catheter into the peritoneal cavity. It absorbs the toxic molecules in the blood within a few hours. The dialysate in the abdomen must be emptied out of the body through the abdominal catheter. The patient performs this manually four times a day. Each draining filling procedure lasts approximately 30 minutes. This method does not require an external blood circulating device because the peritoneum itself acts as a filter to eliminate toxic substances from the blood. The peritoneum is a thin membrane lining the inner wall of the abdominal cavity. It is irrigated by small vessels and contains pores through which water and waste are eliminated. Peritoneal dialysis requires the use of a catheter, which is put in place during a surgical operation with a few days' stay in a hospital. There are two kinds of peritoneal dialysis. Continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis, CAPD. Automated peritoneal dialysis, APD. Mr. Roth had his second kidney removed in 2006. Learning that dialysis would be indispensable, he chose continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis, which can be performed at home. Being a restaurant owner, he has an atypical schedule. He often works late, for example, so it was important for him to be free to choose when to change the dialysis pouch. I, uh, I hid myself at first. I, I respected the schedule, uh, I'd do it in secret, etc., you know, etc. Et 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 I'd go home to perform the dialysis and then come back. It was pretty crazy, very crazy. And then I, I loosened up I, and said to myself, uh, this is saving my life, nobody else's. So I'll do what I want and how I can. Hygiene is extremely important when you connect and disconnect the catheter. You must be extremely careful because peritonitis could develop if a microbe enters the peritoneum. The crucial moment is when the tube is connected and there's just no holding back. You have to keep your material in a clean place, but be particularly meticulous when doing the transfer. Well, it's a constraint. A constraint, but, um, well, one which, as far as I'm concerned, is perfectly manageable. And, um, well, I, I decided, with more or less success, to change as little as possible my way of living. I have I've lived almost two years using this method. I, I performed dialysis on the highway. I've done it in friends' homes while picnicking. I've done it in a tent. I've even gone camel riding in the desert with my dialysis kit. Well, as it happened, I didn't use it there because timing-wise it really wasn't necessary. <laughs> but I almost did my dialysis with the pouch hanging from a camel's ear. You dismantle it, you remove the hanger, which is reusable. Then all you have to do is throw it all into the bin, 
or put it in a plastic bag to be more discreet. The second type of peritoneal dialysis is called automated peritoneal dialysis, or APD. This is an automated procedure and is performed only once during the night. For Mrs. Beechler, chronic kidney disease runs in the family. She, her mother and her brother have all suffered from hereditary polycystic disease. She quickly understood that peritoneal dialysis was the treatment best suited to her needs. It allows her greater independence. She quickly made up her mind. My chronic kidney failure is caused by a hereditary disease. Uh, in the evening, I prepare the device, the tubes and the bags. It only takes 10 or 15 minutes. This method requires the use of a peritoneal dialysis catheter, but also a home device which automatically performs the transfers during the night. The abdominal catheter doesn't bother me at all. You must wear a mask and disinfect your hands. Disinfecting your hands is extremely important. The device doesn't bother me. It makes a little noise, but I've grown used to it. I often sleep uninterrupted all night long. And I'm surprised when I realize that the entire procedure was performed and I didn't feel a thing. The first thing I do in the morning when I get out of bed is open the device, remove the material, the bag and the tubes. I wrap it all together and place it in the bin. My dialysis is done and everything is fine. I have nothing to worry about all day. Absolutely nothing. Oh, I quickly understood that peritoneal dialysis is exactly what I needed. I enjoy sports, gardening, I like, uh, I like painting. So I understood that peritoneal dialysis during the night would be perfect. My days are free to do whatever I like. The best treatment for chronic kidney disease is a renal transplant. It replaces the deficient organ and eliminates the need for dialysis. Kidneys from living donors are being used more and more because of a lack of deceased donors. Transplants can now be scheduled which reduces the waiting period during dialysis. More than 70 kidney transplants have been performed in Geneva over the last 30 years. However, this number has now grown to an average of 30 transplants per year, with 98% success at one year and 85% at five years. But this level of success depends on the patient's stricter observation of the lifelong anti-rejection treatment. I had the transplant six months ago on September 11, 2007. It went really well. It's great. The medical visits have been good. I feel really lucky because I've hardly had any problems. Your transplant took place six months ago on September the 11th, 2007. How do you feel? Great. I haven't had any problems. Your results are excellent. Really good. I'm glad. When I read your file, when I read it, I can't believe you've had a transplant. Everything looks normal. Now that it's been six months, it's time to look at your medicine. You have 12 pills to take. Is that okay? Yeah. Do they go down well? Yeah, no problem. There aren't any side effects, nothing. That's not too many pills. Good. I'm fine with it. Do you ever forget them? How have you organized yourself to take them? I take them before going to school in the morning and when I'm watching TV in the evening. 
or I remember to take them during supper. I never forget because I know it's for my own good. So you take them at mealtime? Yeah. Perfect. That's fine. I don't have any problems. I feel like any other young person except that I never forget that I had a transplant. It helps me remember what I've been through. This treatment is as close to healing as possible, yet it is not risk-free. The risks involved are the same as with any surgery or anesthesia, but there are also cardiovascular risks and the possibility that the body rejects the new kidney. There may also be significant side effects, increased infections, diabetes, cancer. This is why some patients cannot have a transplant. There are three possible procedures, hemodialysis, peritoneal dialysis, transplant. It is best to choose one of these procedures before dialysis becomes necessary, and it is possible to change methods. Group consultation enables patients to inform themselves and to exchange information concerning the advantages and disadvantages of each procedure. The patient is treated by their nephrologist, you may also consult a dietitian. It is important to maintain a careful diet when you suffer from chronic kidney disease in order to avoid an accumulation of potassium, phosphorus, salt and water. Eating well and consuming enough protein is important for a successful dialysis. Whatever you've experienced, whatever phase you are at, you are not alone. The nephrologist, the nurses, the dietitian and your general practitioner your family, your friends, they are all there, each with their own role to play. Help, counselling and support. Do not hesitate to call on them. <laughs>